No sir. No sir, not yet. I just I just pressed start. Yeah, yeah sir, it started. It has started. Okay, okay, okay. No Thank problem. you sir. Yeah. So now, uh, ah, so what I was saying, the left hand side is the problem that this left hand side is the problem that you might have got, and the right hand side is the problem that you converted to. Notice left hand side is in Rn. This is a problem x. You only had x1, x2, x3, xn. Now what you have done? Okay, this this n this is n variables. Okay. Now what you have done? You have added what? Added k many y variables and r many this z variables. So uh, right now you are in r n plus k plus r okay the right hand side is a problem in r n plus k plus r so what has happened you had a separate problem now you have converted to an slpp this is slpp fine the right hand side is in slpp but it is in a separate dimension altogether and it has so many variables okay number of i mean the number of constraints that is fine so the number of rows that is fine, but the number of columns has changed. I mean, it has now so many variables. So then what was your target now? Your target was to solve the given problem. Now the given problem was in Rn, you are in a smaller space. So you might think that, oh, I like there was a small set on which I was supposed to minimize or maximize something. Now I have created a huge set and it may take me longer to find minimization like to find the minimum or maximum i do not know what i mean well the actually the thing that that uh, nothing has changed why now the feasible set of the given problem and the feasible set of uh, the converted problem they are in uh, bijection okay both these sets are in bijection one to one correspondence not only that if x is one point here, that corresponds to that, or x naught is one point here, that corresponds to x naught, y naught, and z naught. Then the cost over here, the cost is C transpose x naught, and look at the cost over here, the cost is also C transpose x naught on the right hand side. So it basically means one point from the left has been mapped to one point on the right on the high, on that higher dimensional uh, problem whereas the costs have remained the same so therefore we are fine so that is the theorem 2.3 that is what it says and it is very easy to show so that's what uh, wherever you see this this symbol it basically means it is very easy routine to do it okay this is one example that I will be, uh, I mean, I will be coming back to, to explain many different things. And it is, an, it is a very easy example. See, it is talking about minimize x1 plus x2, subject to x1 is less than or equal to 1, x2 is less than or equal to 1, and xir greater than or equal to 0. So the, obviously, the minimum is 0 only. So that, that is not a, uh, this thing. That is not, not our consideration. So here, this is the feasible set. This is 0, 1, and then 0, 1. This is the feasible set. Over this, I, I am supposed to minimize x1 plus x2. Anyway, right now, what is the standard form in the matrix form? Now, in the matrix form, see, because x1 was less than or equal to 1, that particular equation will be replaced by something like x1 plus x3 equal to 1. x2 was less than or equal to 1, so that will be x2 plus x4 uh, equal to 1 and then now you have x1 x2 x3 x4 all greater than equal to 0 so then the slpp will be minimize x1 plus x2 subject to so in the matrix form x1 plus x3 equal to 1 x2 plus x4 equal to 1 so this is in the matrix form that is how we have got okay so so now you can practice one or two, I mean, conversion, how to convert it to matrix form. These are 
very very routine okay uh, somewhere you will see this no pen exercise or i might have simply written no pen it basically means this is a question that i want you to think without touching your pen okay okay uh, now this is about uh, what now if i want to implement uh, an algorithm if i want to write an algorithm develop one algorithm so what shall be the standard format that i should be uh, I, like I, I am going to consider so my standard format of lpp slpp that i have said so slpp means standard linear programming problem okay fine uh, now we'll talk about convex set why do i need convex sets well, convex sets, whenever you are going to write something like this, see the, you have seen the feasible set of the SLPP, they will be in this format only. The, this will be set up all x such that x equal to b, x greater than or equal to 0, that, I mean, b is greater than or equal to 0, but for the time, time being, you forget that b part, right? So you have a set of linear uh, equations, okay? and uh, with x greater than or equal to 0 and this set is always convex such such a kind of set is always convex and if you are interested in or if whenever a person is interested to develop some kind of algorithm for whatever problem uh, the person is considering so the first thing one has to do is to study that problem to uh, maybe I mean, study that uh, set and uh, the properties of the functions, many things. So here we shall uh, study some properties of this feasible set and the first property that we will know and that this is a convex set. Okay, so what is a convex set? Before that, we uh, if I have two points in Rn, uh, I shall use the closed interval type of uh, symbol to denote the line segment joining x and y when x and y are in rn two points the line segment joining this so what is this now this is the set of all lambda x plus one minus lambda y so that lambda belongs to zero one okay so whenever x is here y is here this is the set of all all points okay that that is this this set uh, practically if you take lambda equal to zero then you get y if you take lambda equal to one, you get uh, x. And if you take lambda equal to half, you get uh, the middle point that you know, right? x plus y by two, that is the middle point. Okay. Uh, what is the, what is a set, uh, what is a convex set? Now a set is said to be convex if the, uh, for every two pairs, I mean, every two points inside it, the line segment joining is also inside the set. That is how we say a set is convex. For example, by definition, vacuously true, empty set is convex because whenever, I mean, uh, you can find two points inside it, the line segment will also be inside it. You, if you cannot, that is not the problem of the definition. Okay, singleton set for the same same thing. In order to contradict, in order to say that it does not, you will have to show that show the existence of two points and a combination like this saying that it is not there. So that is why. So empty set, singleton sets. So vacuously true. Straight line segment, if you have a straight line segment that is convex, straight line itself is convex. A circular disk, including any part of the boundary, you can have a circular disk. You can include one or two points from the boundary or one or, one or two, uh, I mean, arcs from the boundary. That is okay. Uh, that is also convex. Any subspace of Rn that is also convex. What is uh, one easy thing to uh, prove very routinely straight from the definition? Is that if you have a collection of convex sets, convex sets in Rn, and you take their intersection, whatever you get, it is convex itself. Very, very I mean, very easy to prove also. Let x, y be two points in this intersection. Then this x, y is in each S alpha. Because S alpha is convex, it will contain the line segment joining x and y. 
and this is true for each s alpha so the whole line segment will be there in the intersection so that 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 would end okay uh, it follows from the definition straight from the definition that such a set is always convex straight from definition let x and y be two points then lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y will satisfy this this is also another easy fact if you have any norm on rn Okay, then uh, the open unit ball uh, with respect to this norm. Wh what do I mean by open unit ball? Uh, it means B one A center at any 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 point. Okay, so that is this means the set of all points that are uh, uh, at a distance less than one from A. So the open unit ball. So I because I am not including the boundary. Uh, so th they are always convex. But what would happen if I uh, include part of the boundary that you think a little bit? Uh, be careful. In some case, for example, I said about circular disk. In some cases, uh, if you include any part of the boundary, it is fine. But if you uh, uh, draw a few more open balls, open unit balls, uh, you, will, you will see. Okay, uh, so that's that's about the definition of convex set. You need one Y1, you need many, many definitions. Okay, uh, there is another simple definition, it is called a cone. What is a cone? Like a cone is a set such that uh, whenever there is a point, Non negative, all non negative multiples of that point is also there. That's that's what it is. And what is a convex cone? A convex cone is a cone and it is convex. So, what is that? Now, for example, empty set is cone. Whenever you find a point, all non negative multiples will be there. The set singleton set zero, it is also a cone. Whatever point is there, their non negative multiples are there. Rn plus the first uh, orthant. Okay, so in R2 it will be our first quadrant. That is a cone. Whatever point you have, all non-negative multiples of that are also there in the set. So these are uh, some and any subspace. If you are talk, thinking about any subspace of Rn, so uh, they are also uh, convex cones. Okay. Here is something. This one in R2, this would look like this. Okay. So what you are doing in R2, it will look like all of this part, the boundary points, that is the uh, top y-axis and right x-axis, they are not included. Okay. So all these are having coordinates strictly bigger than zero. I am talking about R2, and you are talking about all coordinates x, y such that these are strictly bigger than zero x is strictly bigger than zero y is strictly bigger than zero that set is that set a cone Achha, first of all is that set convex nah, huh, that is convex why i mean if i take two points then line segment joining also it will it will have all the points so that will be there that is no problem but is that a cone no 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 that is not a cone because all non-negative multiples by saying non-negative multiple, zero multiple is also there. So I should include, let me include this set union zero. Now is this a cone? Now yes, it is a cone. Okay, it is a convex cone. You can see that it is a convex cone. There is, there is no problem. Whatever problem, whatever point you take here and zero here, then the line segment will lie strictly inside this except this zero which is included so that is that is why it is so this set is a convex cone and uh, this set set up all x in rn such that x is less than equal to zero that's fine that is also a uh, convex cone uh, so you saw this one is convex so in particular if i take b equal to zero that is convex Cone that is because if x satisfy this, 2x will also satisfy this, 5x will also satisfy this. So it will be a cone. 
so it will be a convex cone. Okay, uh, two things I want to uh, uh, remember now from linear algebra. One is the definition of a linear combination. So linear combination of what now? Like if I have some n n vectors, n points from Rm. I mean, and if I take some alpha one x one and alpha two x two and alpha n x n and then sum them up, whatever I get, I call it a linear combination of x1 x2 up to xn okay and this combination i will call a non trivial linear combination if or rather i say let's say a trivial linear combination is the is the combination which takes all the all the coefficients 0 0 0 0 0 any other combination is non trivial so at least one alpha has to be non zero if you are talking about non trivial linear combination and uh, by this time you would have definitely realized that whenever we talk of a linear combination linear combination is not a series kind of summation it is not uh, i mean the summation of infinitely many vectors it is not that okay and uh, by span of a set we uh, mean the linear span of uh, the set s that is the subspace generated by s okay so this is the collection of all linear combinations of elements of s remember s can be infinite but if i am saying all linear combinations of all linear combinations of elements of s that means that means what now you take s from s collect some finitely many elements take their linear combination keep that in your bag and then take another finitely many take their linear combination keep them do like this do like this whatever you have finally that is span okay conventionally smart span of empty set is zero and uh, we also know one result that span of s is always a subspace okay that is that is very easy to prove that you already know from linear algebra okay we want to talk about uh, more different type of combination a linear combination is called an affine combination if sum of the coefficients is equal to one okay and the collection of all affine combinations of elements of s i will be denoting it by affs okay so this is the collection of all affine combinations of elements of f the the way span s is the collection of all linear combinations of elements of s affine s is like that okay it is easy to see that affine s is an affine subspace actually what is an affine subspace now it is a translated subspace in fact if s naught is a point of s then affine s is actually equal to s naught plus span s minus s naught let me give one example obviously here Oh, s s minus s naught is basically x minus s naught for all x belonging to s so that is that is the difference it is not um, not that you delete s naught from s not that it is vector uh, this way so we are there itself okay for example let me talk about this thing this example suppose you are in r3 you look at e1 e2 e3 e1 is 100 uh, this is 010, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, These are standard names, so I shall be using them. So imagine, imagine these three points. And then if you take these three points, consider the plane that passes through them. So then that plane is this one only. X plus Y plus Z equal to ma. That is the plane that passes through. So, okay. Now what you do, you, you uh, 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 push that plane, uh, you translate that plane so that it passes through zero. So what is the parallel plane that will pass through zero? And the parallel plane will be x plus y plus z equal to one, uh, equal to zero. <clears throat> that is the parallel plane. It it will pass through this. Okay. So if when you translate it by e1 or by by that mat for that matter by any point, translate it by any point that is on the plane itself, that you will get. So therefore, what you will get, now you will get this, this plane x plus y plus z equal to 1 is actually equal to 
E1 translated by E1 and then span of this E2 minus E1 and E3 minus E1. If you take these two vectors, so imagine the vectors E2 minus E1 and E3 minus E1 and then take their, take their span. If you take their span, what you will be getting? You will be getting this plane. This plane. Okay. And then if you uh, translate this whole uh, plane by the vector E1, then you will get this plane. Okay. I mean, if, if you, I think you, if people remember, uh, if I uh, like uh, from Gaussian elimination method, how to find a basis for the null space of this one. So this is the null space. I have just given one equation. And how, how do you get this? Now this is the vector you will get. One minus one, zero. This will be a point on this vector space. This is a plane, na, two dimension. And you will get another vector that will form a basis. This is a basis. Na? So this is E2 minus E1. E2 minus 1, E1 is like minus 1, 1, 0. And E3 minus E1 is like 1, 0, minus 1. I mean, the other way. I have written the minus. So that, that, is, the, that is a basis. And they will span this, this plane. And then if you translate it by E1, you will get this plane. So basically, that is what this one is saying. Remember this one. This is very important. OK. Uh, when do we call a linear combination a non-negative combination? Now, if the coefficients are greater than or equal to 0. Now, what is the collection of a non-negative combination? All non-negative combinations of a set S. I call this a cone. The cone uh, of generated by S or and I denote it by cone S. Okay. This is the collection of all non-negative combinations of this. Actually, it is all actually a cone because <clears throat> what is the definition of a cone? Now, uh, a cone is something like if one point is there, all non-negative combinations, uh, all non-negative multiples of that point should be there. Okay. So if you have one point here, suppose you have a point here X. This point X is here because it is a non-negative combination of lambda 1, S1, some finitely many points of S. Some non-negative combination of some finitely many points of S. And in that case, I mean, 5x will also be here because it will be 5 times lambda 1, 5 times lambda ksk. It is also a non negative combination of elements of S. So, by definition, this is a cone. So, so it is called the cone generated by S. Okay. So, what have I got? Now, I have got uh, on one side linear combination and the collection of all linear combinations of elements of S, I called span of S. And then I have affine combination. Affine combination uh, means the summation of uh, the coefficients. Sum of the coefficients is equal to 1. And the collection of all affine combinations of elements of S is affine S. And then I have uh, uh, non-negative combination. And here I have cone S. We'll have one more, and that is called the convex combination. What is convex combination? Now it is affine and non negative both. That means some of the coefficients should be one, and all the coefficients should be non negative. That's when I call it a convex combination. And the collection of convex combinations of elements of S will be called the convex hull. This is a very standard name. Uh, the symbols might differ from uh, text to text. I will use conv 
because at least it reminds me that I am talking about convex hull. This is always a convex set that is very easy to see, follows from the definition. Okay. Okay, uh, let me take some uh, few examples. Suppose I have in Rn, I have two points AB, A not equal to B. So uh, I will be writing instead of ri instead of writing convex one bracket, second bracket A comma B, I will be simply writing this to mean that it is the convex hull of A and B. So this will be actually nothing but the closed line segment A and B. Okay, the line segment joining A and B, that is the convex hull. What happens if I take three uh, non-collinear points A, B, C, three distinct non-collinear points, huh? they are then non-collinear points. A, B, C and take the convex hull, now I should be getting the triangular plate with vertices A, B, C. Okay, that, that, the closed triangular plate. So that, that's what it is. But what about the affine combination of, uh, of AB? What will be AFF of these two points AB? Now, so I have A here, I have B here. The convex combination will give me this, this much. Now, what is the affine combination of AB? Now, affine combination will give me the whole line, the extended line passing through this okay that is the affine combination now what imagine this is your so suppose i am talking in r2 now what so then a is this vector okay this is the vector a and b is this vector right and they are linearly independent so what will be the span of a b not the span of a b will be the whole of r2 Okay, convex combination is the line segment. Affine combination is the line containing both of them. And span can be anything. I mean, it can be a two dimensional or if they are lying in the same line passing through origin like this. Okay, so it may be that one dimensional also that will pass through the origin itself. It can be that. So depending on it can be dimension one or dimension two that's why it i have written all linear combinations that is the span of a and b can be a subspace of dimension one or two that's what it is okay now here is something that you uh, should realize suppose that i have uh, i have a vector x1 which is a linear combination of some points in this set and i have a vector xk which is a linear combination of some points in this set then if i take a linear combination of x1 to xk that itself will be a linear combination of some points of this union okay so basically a linear combination of some finitely many linear combinations so basically is also a linear combination that is a linear combination of linear combinations a linear combination of linear combinations is also a linear combination in a similar way you can also verify that for example a non-negative combination so suppose that uh, i have a set and you have um, made a non-negative combination of some elements of it. And then your friend also has made a non-negative combination of some elements of it. What some elements that, like, you might have chosen some different, he might have chosen something in common, doesn't know, or like, I do not know. Now, what I do, I take whatever vector you have got and whatever vector your friend has got, I take a, like, five times your vector, seven times that, like, his vector, and then add them up. Whatever vector I have got, is that ultimately a non-negative combination of the set that I had? Non-negative combination of, uh, I mean, some vectors of the set that I had? Now, yes. So that is why non-negative combination of a set of, uh, I mean, of some non-negative combinations 
each itself a non-negative combination. Similarly, affine combinations, you will check them. Okay. Uh, think about uh, different types of geometrical interpretation of uh, different combinations of three distinct non-collinear non points that you can do. Okay. Uh, what is this? The convex hull of E1, E2, E3. Well, this is the closed triangular plate with vertices E1, E2, E3. That's the closed triangular plates with corner this. What is our set, our favorite set? Remember our favorite set? Our favorite set is like on R2 and this. So our favorite set is the convex hull of 0, E1, E2, and E1 plus E2. OK, this is this one, this one, this one, and this one. OK, you can also call it a convex hull of 0, E1, E2, and then E1 plus E2 by 2, E1 plus E2 by 2. That is this point, the middle point. If you take convex hull of these five points also, you will get the same set. OK. So it is not that like, I mean, it can um, get different. OK, here are some easy facts, uh, quick facts. If I take the convex hull of S, it will always contain S by definition. OK. Convex combination of, for example, if I, if I take X of this, then one times x, and that 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 itself is there. That's a convex combination, no problem. Okay. And if you, uh, I mean, uh, that that is okay, no problem. If S is a subset of T, then the convex hull of S will be a subset of convex hull of T. Okay. Span of S will be a subset of span of T. That also you know. Affine space generated by S will be contained in the affine space generated by T. Okay. This is because of the combination itself. Whatever combination you take over here, the same combination will be available here. The same combination will be available here. Whatever combination, if you take two times S1 plus uh, minus one times S2, two S1 minus S2. What S1, S2, no? S1, S2 are some points. You, you require the sum of the affine combination means what? It's a combination with sum of the coefficients to be like equal to one. That's what it is. By the way, when you take S1 and S2, if this is S1 and if this is S2, what is 2S1 uh, minus S2? Now, this vector, is S2 minus S1, OK? And therefore, this vector, if you are looking at the vector this way, this is S1 minus S2. And add S1 to that. So starting from S1, go that much in that direction. So this point is nothing but S1 plus S1 minus S2, that is 2S1 minus S2. OK, so th that is how you generate the whole line. Affine combinations generate the whole line. That is that is why the affine combination of two points, all affine combination of two points gives you the whole, whole line containing them, straight line containing them. OK, suppose that S is a subset of Rn and it is non-empty. Oh, uh -huh. Cone S is also a subset of quantity. That's the same thing. Suppose that S is uh, non-empty. Then S is equal to convex hull of S. If and only if this IFF means if and only if S is convex. Well, if S is convex, then the convex hull will be itself. OK. And if S is equal to the convex hull of S, then S itself is convex, right? If S equal to convex hull of S, it means that convex hull of S, yeah, you take convex hull of T also or convex hull of anything. 
if s is equal to convex all of something then s is convex itself by definition because you have already said convex all of anything is a convex set okay so if s is equal to convex all of s then definitely s is convex conversely if s is convex then convex all of s will be itself you will not got anything else okay so that that is how a proof follows by you can using induction that is because the convex uh, in the definition of uh, convex hull we used manifold things like lambda 1 x1 plus lambda 2 all convex combination but for the definition of convexity you use only two points the line joining two points so then you will you will say that okay for three points four points and everything is there if you try to write a proof you will get that why the induction is required there uh, it is not it is routine only okay in a similar way s is equal to the cone of s if and only if s is a convex cone the cone generated by s uh, this part is from uh, linear algebra s is equal to the span of s if and only if s is a subspace and s is equal to the affine space of s if and only if s is a affine subspace they are all very trivial kind of but i mean you you have to think about them calmly for 2 3 minutes you will get it these are all easy things okay uh, one fact that if if you have a non empty set then the convex hull of s is the intersection of all convex sets containing s you can also prove this one that on one side we define the convex hull of s as the collection of all convex combinations of elements of s you can also show it that the convex hull of s is actually equal to the intersection of all convex sets containing s this is easy actually uh, because see imagine imagine one set s and a convex set that contains s now because this convex set contains s then it will also contain the big set is convex so it will also contain any convex combination of points of s so suppose that i have a big set over here okay imagine i have a big set over here and what is it now it is con convex it is given to be convex and then what now i have a set it contains s see it contains s somewhere here maybe s contains few points it contains s fine now this is the set big set t and t is given to be convex this is given so it contains s nah in that case it contains s1 the first point or why should i say first point one point of s now how it contains s1 it contains s2 some other point now yes it contains s2 is t convex now yes contains s1 yes contains s2 yes therefore it will contain convex combination of points of s1 and s2 like points s1 and s2 all convex combination as t is convex so because t is a convex set and it contains the points of s it will also contain convex combination of points of s so that basically means t will contain the convex hull of s okay and what else now i know a convex set that contains s what is that now i know that this t this is a t this t i know this particular t what is this t now this t is convex hull of s so this is a t i know the convex this is a convex set and it contains s so the convex hull of s will appear as the intersection because you are taking intersection of all convex sets containing s 
and you saw that you just showed that any convex set that contains s will also contain convex hull of this therefore intersection of t will contain convex hull that you said further you you now know that this, this convex hull of s will appear as 1t over here and therefore this will be an equality because on the, in that case in the left hand side you will also get exactly equal to convex s okay some true false questions and uh, right here is a here is a simple fact that i wanted to know uh, okay today since i will not have time to cover any further let me uh, finish it by uh, discussing this one Imagine that I have two subspaces B and W. Okay, two subspaces B and W. And somebody says x plus W. What is x? Now x is a point. Or oh, you take a. A plus W is equal to B plus B. A plus W is what? A translation of W. B plus B translation of B. Now from here, if this is given. This is given. Okay, from here, so that V is equal to W. It has to be the case. Are, imagine, imagine this way. Imagine R three. In R three, you imagine a subspace. Okay, imagine a subspace passing through uh, subspace means it. So imagine a plane that passes through a region. Just imagine one plane, and then translate that plane by an amount. Okay, fine. And I also have imagined one plane, and I also have translated it by some amount. Okay, but finally I have reached the translation that you got. Now from there, can you say that the the plane that you imagined first? And I imagine first they have to be the same. The answer is yes. Because if you if I if we have two different planes passing through a region, two distinct planes, by translating whatever amount you cannot make them equal. Okay. So if one translation of B and anyway the algebraic proof is G is G over here. If if we have given A plus W is equal to B plus B, notice that. in that case b belongs to a plus w a plus w because zero is uh, uh, available there in this so that will basically mean that b minus a belongs to w okay now i want to say now let b be one element in b i want to say b is subset of this so in that case this will imply b plus small b belongs to b plus capital b now because they are equal that will mean that b plus a uh, small b belongs to a plus capital w this will mean that b plus a plus a uh, sorry b minus a not plus this is minus b minus a plus small b belongs to w but i already known that b minus a is inside w okay so from there it will follow that b belongs to w so this will mean that this capital b will be a subset of small b in a similar ways w will be so when geometrically it is it is very easy so now the item b suppose that i have some nine vectors in r50 and somebody tells me that a2 minus a1 a3 minus a1 a9 minus a1 is linearly independent is it true that a1 minus a9 a2 minus a9 a8 minus a9 sorry is linearly independent you think about it the answer is yes and you are going to use a uh, part a and 
the description of the affine subspace. You remember, this is actually equal to what? Now this is actually equal to, remember that, okay, let me tell this one. Affine of A1, A2, A9, this is equal to A1 plus span of, uh, sorry, not uh, span of this set, this set, this set, this set, this set, this set over here, span of this. It is also equal to A9 plus span of this set, this one. Okay. So, but then this is this affine affine space is fixed. This is the affine affine combination collection of all affine combinations of A1, A2, A9. It is given fixed. Everything. Now you are saying this is a translation of this one, and somebody else saying, no, no, I got it by considering this and by taking a translation by a A9, by an amount of A9. But then the A item says, if I have A plus W is equal to B plus B, then B equal to W. Then in that case, they have to be the same. These two sets have to be the same. Now, if I have given that this set is linearly independent, then the span you must have got a dimension 8 element, right? In that case, because they are the same, the spans are the same, this must have also, uh, I mean, the second one must be having dimension 8, which basically means this is linearly independent, okay? And so we'll continue tomorrow.